everyone welcome back to another video so today we are going to do an unboxing and a little bit of a review and I think we are going to swatch out all the colors as well of the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2's I have been wanting these for the longest time and I've finally been able to get them and I'm so excited about that I have had this little pack of 10 for the longest time probably since my kids were little and I had bought them because we used to homeschool and it was probably part of a curriculum that we had used but I found these stashed away in my closet and I actually have a video where I did a background with them that was for one of the color alongs here on my channel this was the background that I did with the Neo Color 2 uh, set of 10 a while back for a color on that we had on my channel and I really 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 loved them <laughs> and I just wanted to have all of the colors if you've not yet seen this tutorial with the Neo Color 2's I will make sure that they are linked in the upper right hand corner but I've been wanting this 84 set for the longest time so I now finally have it and we are going to unbox these today if you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a new video. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that helps my channel out a whole lot. In the description box below, you will find everything down there that you see in this video. I also always have a link to my Facebook group if you would like to join us over there, as well as a link for my email list if you would like to sign up for that, and also for my Patreon if you would like to support me there. Let's go ahead and get into this unboxing. They come like this in this cardboard box, and I believe they were inside another box when they were delivered from Amazon. I did order these from Amazon because the price had finally dropped and so that is what I usually do is I always wait for a price drop if it's something that's on my wish list. And they finally dropped and so it was my chance to go ahead and grab these. And the packaging used to look like this and so over the years, I guess they have changed the packaging. And so this is the new packaging. Let's go ahead and unwrap them. Oh, you guys have no idea how excited I am to try these out. So they come like this and then they have the little sleeve on the outside of the tin. So let's get that or slide that off. Oh, this is a really nice tin. So let's open this up and see what we get. Okay, so you just get this little um, card in here that tells about the company. It just says, for over 100 years, we have been accompanying you and the expression of your creativity, your precious Karen Dosh box, and their bright colors have been carefully produced by our craftsmen in our unique manufacturer in Geneva. Oh, these are stickers. Oh, I love this. Oh, how neat. Yeah, they look like they're clear stickers. I wonder if you can color these. <laughs> that would be kind of neat, wouldn't it? Okay, so you get the little um, styrofoamy sheet on top for protection. And this is what the first tray looks like. Look at these beautiful colors. So they're wax pastels and they are water soluble and they look like crayons. As with most Karen Dosh products, you have each tray in an actual tin. It's really, really nice. My Pablos are like that and I really, really love that. Their packaging is always top notch. I love it, love it, love it. Here is the second tray. And let me see how they have these colors laid out before I go and swatch them. They're a little bit different than the order I would normally use. It looks like we have a lot of the cool colors up here in the top tray. And then the warmer colors down here in the bottom tray. At least that's what it looks like to me. That is what they've done. Because if you look at this, you could see some of the yellow colors here. And then if you look up here, 
you can see that they've got some colors that look like they are more yellow. These are probably some of the lighter skin tones, I would think. Looks like to me that you would have some of the shades that you could use for darker skin tones down here. I'm very excited about this because I want to be able to do some portrait work with these. Let's first talk about the sets and how they come and how many you can get and then I'll let you know what some of the prices are. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you get in the 10 pack first. So I'm assuming this is the old packaging like I said earlier and they were a little bit more difficult to open so that may be why they changed their packaging. It flipped open like this. Now I'm not sure if this is only for the 10 pack and how the 10 pack used to come or how this was you know among all of them and their whole entire line of the different sets that they have. So if we look at the colors we get in the 10 set we have white, a pink, a purple, a blue, a brown, a yellow, our black, an orange, a red, and a green. And so you just really get the colors that you would need and then these are water soluble and you can actually create other colors by mixing. So I'm sure that you could do a whole lot with just this 10 set if you were to blend some of these colors together. As far as the pricing goes, you can get this 10 set that I just showed you right now for $18.75 on Amazon. The 15 set is $28.49. The 30 set is $45.44. And the 40 set is $60. $63.77. The 84 set, this that's what this one is here, and this one is $149.32 right now on Amazon. You can also get this 84 set in a beautiful wooden box, and that's available at Blick Art Supplies. I shop on their website all the time. It's a fabulous place to get your art supplies, but I will have a link down below as well for Blick if you're interested in that, but you can get that set for $302.67. Now if we wanted to compare some of the prices from Blick to Amazon, I'm going to go ahead and give you a rundown too of all of the prices on Blick and they may be a little bit cheaper. So it's looking to me like they actually are cheaper. If you wanted the 10 set on Blick, it's only $16.08 as opposed to Amazon that is $18.75. For the 15 set you can get it for $23.68 as opposed to Amazon which is $28.49 right now. The 30 set is $49.56 so that one is cheaper on Amazon right now at $45.44. If you were interested in the 40 set Blick has it for $58.82 and that is going to be a really great deal compared to Amazon because right now Amazon has it for $63.77 and then for the 84 set without the wooden tin, this one here, it's going to be $148.40 so it is only a very little bit less because at Amazon it's $149.32. So you're saving what, maybe a dollar. Blix um, shipping is usually very, very fast, but I don't know, if you have Prime on Amazon, then you usually get your stuff in two days. Blick has always been really fast for me, and I usually get my stuff like three to four days, I would say. I actually just ordered the Luminance portrait set because it was the only place that it was available to me and I actually ordered it when it was on back order and it wasn't supposed to be available until uh, the 4th of April and I'm actually supposed to get it today and today is the 4th of April. So we will see if I get those today but there will be a review coming on those as well. If we take a closer look at these wax pastels it says Caran d'Ache over here and then Neo Color 2. Under that it says water soluble wax pastel and then here it has the colors and it says ruby red here so I'm assuming these other color names here are in other languages. 
What's really cool about these is that if you look at these, you could see the little arrows. And these little arrows allow you to remove the paper as you use your uh, pastel. So you're not having to just kind of tear all of the paper off at one time and losing all of the paper that is actually protecting your wax pastel. They also do carry a Neocolor 1 and the Neocolor 1s are not water soluble. So if you are actually looking for these and you want the water soluble set, make sure that you are getting the Neocolor 2 because these are the water soluble ones and the Neocolor 1 are actually more like an actual crayon. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first tray and talk about some of the colors. So we start over here and we've got some colors that look like they may be great for lighter skin tones. And then this is more, this is called salmon. This one, yeah, this one is called flesh. And then apricot. And then we go into our pink colors. This one's called rose. It's important to remember, like I said earlier, these colors are blendable. So even though you've got 84 colors here, you can blend these colors together to create even more colors. So we've got our purples here, and then we're going to come up here and it's going to bring us into our purpley blues, into the blues. And then we have another purple here. So these are not exactly in the order that I would want them. Oh my gosh, we have a light blue. <laughs> oh, you know how excited I get when I see light blues in a set. And then our teals and greens. Oh, look at this gorgeous color, and look at this lime green. These are fabulous highlight colors. Oh, I can't wait to swatch these. And then we're getting into our olive greens as we move up. We've got some darker teals in here, too. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second tray. So the second tray, we've got much brighter yellows. And then we go into some orange colors. This one is like a yellow orange. It's called golden yellow. And this is our orange. And then light fast orange. Now these are light fast and they do have different light fast ratings on them. I don't actually see them on the actual wax pastel, but I'm sure if you went to the Karen Dash website, you'd be able to get the light fast ratings. We are going into our reds and then into our brown red. And then we go into our browns. And this color is called Saffron. And then we've got some browns. And it looks like we've got some colors here for some darker skin tones. And that is really, really cool because that is what I plan to do with this set. And that is why I wanted it because I wanted to be able to get several skin tone colors because I wanted to do some portraits with these. Let's come over here. Oh, and it looks like we've got some metallics. So this is... That is called gold. That doesn't really look like gold to me, but it looks more like a green color. And then we have bronze down here, and this is silver, and then our white. And then we've got several grays here, and then we go into black. So those are the colors, and this is what they look like in their package. We are going to go ahead and swatch all of these colors out and then after we are done swatching them and we could see all the beautiful colors laid out, we are gonna go ahead and see how they work. We are gonna go ahead and start swatching out these colors onto this colored pencil color chart. This is one that I created and it is available if you sign up for my email list, which is down in the description box below. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these colors out and I am going to do it to music so you could kind of see all of the colors come together and I want to go ahead and add a little bit of water on the top half I'm going to do the actual color and then I think I want to just put some water on the bottom half so that I could see the difference in what it looks like when it is just laid down naturally and then what it's going to look like once you add water to it so I'm going to do that to each and every one, and I think when I add water to them, I might actually 
come back and we can do that part together. So we're gonna get these all swatched out and we're gonna see what they look like. So let's go ahead and do that now.
84 colors all swatched out and you can now see exactly what the color range looks like all laid out together and let's go over some of these colors and then I am going to add a little bit of water to them with my water brush. I did do this on watercolor paper. I was very surprised because my printer actually took the watercolor paper through very well and printed my swatch sheet on it. So I was very, very surprised by that. And that was pretty exciting because now I know I could print out my coloring PDFs with my printer and use watercolor paper. <laughs> So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at these colors. So we start up here and we have yellow and then we go into our orangish yellows. And then like I said earlier, these look like some really pretty skin tones. Like right here we've got flesh. So that would be like a lighter skin tone. I wanna use these for backgrounds, but I also want to be able to use them to create portraits. So we've got some colors that would look really really great for skin tones down here below and then we've got our lighter colors or our lighter skin tone colors up at the top but if you look through these colors you can see that we've got these beautiful pinks here so we've got like three pinks and then we have a salmon if i'm looking at this it looks like what they're calling purple to me that's not really a true purple that looks like I don't know, it looks more like a mulberry type color, like it maybe has uh, red in it. It's kind of like a pinky purple. And then we go to purple violet and we have mauve and lilac and violet. And then we go here and we have what's called arbor, aubergine, maybe. And that is a very dark, dark, deep, dark purple. That's gonna be gorgeous for shadows. And then my favorite color in every set, you guys know I love blues. So I've got my indigo blue in this set and I have my very pale, pale blue, what they're calling light cobalt blue. So I'm very excited about that. So we've got some deeper blues all up in here and then we go to our teals. We have another blue here and then we have a periwinkle blue, a sky blue, and then like I said, the very light blue. We've got a few teals here and then we've got more of what I would consider a, I don't know, kind of a bright green or more of a true green. And then we have our mossier greens, dark green. And then here we have what I would consider more of a darker teal. They're calling it greenish blue. And then we have more deep, dark, more teal greens here. Emerald green and a few more greens here. Plenty of colors for leaves. They're calling this one that has a lot of yellow in it. This is a beautiful highlight color. They're calling this one Chinese green. We have this gorgeous lime green. Look at these highlight colors. We've got so many beautiful colors for highlights and shadows. The, the color variance in this set is just really, truly amazing. And you can also mix these colors together, like I said earlier, and create other colors. And I'm not gonna do that in this video, but if you would like to see that in a future video, please let me know, because y'all know I love blending colors together to create other colors. <laughs> if you watch some of my previous videos on blending, when I do that with my colored pencils, when I'm creating color combinations, and I show you how you can blend the colors together to create other colors. But back down here, we're back starting with yellows again. So we had a yellow up here they're calling Sahara yellow. And then we are back to yellows. It looks like in the trays, like I said earlier, like the top tray in the set has much more cooler tones in it aside from the few yellows that are in there which would be more of the warmer colors. But there's a lot of cool tones in the top tray. And then there's a lot of warmer tones in the bottom tray. As you can see from looking at this, you could see a whole lot of warmer tones in this area here is from the bottom tray. So we've got all of these yellows here, which is a really good selection of bright, beautiful yellows, and then our really pale, pale yellow. These are gonna to mix together so nicely. So we've got a golden yellow, and then we get into our oranges, and look at all of these reds we have. That is really, really neat, considering there are only 84 colors in this set, and they give you quite a bit of yellows, and that is very different for, from any set that I've seen or any of 
you know, the pencil sets that I'm familiar with, they do give you a lot of reds. You've got your reds that, got br that have browns in them. You've got your true reds and you've got your reds that have oranges in them. You've got quite a few reds here that have oranges in them. So you've got these two reds that have more red than orange. And then when we get over here, we have this orange color that has a lot of red in it. And then we get to, the, well, they're calling this one red flame. So that I'm assuming has some red in it, but not as much. It's more on the orange side. And then we've got our true orange over here. So once we get past to that, we're getting into our brown tone. So we've got a cinnamon and a raw sienna. And here we've got a beautiful golden ochre that would be beautiful to make golden tones with. If you mixed it with maybe this golden ochre and then a little bit of ochre and possibly some raw sienna, that would make a beautiful uh, gold tone if you were doing something that was maybe kind of steampunky or metals or gears or anything like that. So we have a true olive green right here that has a whole lot of green in it. And then we have a moss green up here. And these two are kind of similar. We've got a raw umber, Van Dyke brown. We're getting into our browns now. Then we have a brown here that has quite a bit of red in it. We have, how many browns? Yeah, so we've got a brown up here. Well, a red up here that has quite a bit of brown in it. And then we have this brown that has more brown than red. We have our black here. And then we are going to start getting into our gray. So we have our charcoal gray, which is very close to the black, but has quite a bit of gray in it. So it's a very dark, dark, dark gray. And then we've got our sepia. And then we're getting into our grays, our more blue grays. And then we get into more of our, a lot of these grays have blue in them. I'm seeing a lot of blue in these grays. So we've got our paints. Payne's gray and then our grayish black. That one's really pretty. And then we've got our dark gray, our gray. Here we have what they're calling beige. That one looks very gray to me, but still on the beige side. And then we've got our light gray and our silver gray. This is a beautiful color. And white. And then I wanted to put my metallics down here. We have a silver, a gold, and a bronze. And when I was looking at the gold crayon, or the gold wax pastel. Let me go ahead and pull that out. But when you actually look at it, I don't know, I guess maybe not here, but like the, um, the wrapper has a whole lot of green in it. But when I lay it down, I can see that it is actually gold. And that's a really pretty gold. I can't wait to see what it looks like when we take water to this. So I've got my little uh, water brush here and I'm going to move my pastels out of the way so I could get this on camera but like I said earlier I am going to just put water and activate the bottom part with water on each one of these because I want to be able to see the difference in what it looks like with water and the difference with what it looks like here without water and I think that this Sahara yellow I know that um this is watercolor paper, so it's going to work really well when I add water to these, but you need to have enough pigment down, and when I started, I remember that I didn't put enough down here, and I want to be able to see the true color, so I'm just adding a little bit more here because I really want to see what they look like when I add water to them. Look at all the pigment in these. Is that just crazy? I'm doing this to a few of them because I remember after I started and I was swatching, I actually went back, or not went back, but I started doing this over all of them later on. So I think that's probably enough. We probably have enough pigment. These colors are darker. Yeah, I'm looking down here at the bottom of the swatch sheet and I'm noticing that I laid down much more pigment down here on these other colors once I realized that I was not adding a second layer. And I just wanted to make sure I had that second layer down there just so that they were really true to color as what I'm going to see on my coloring page. Let's see what this one looks like. When we, let's see how these work when we activate them. Oh wow, look how, that's amazing. It just completely dissolves. 
I don't know about you, but I have used cheaper watercolor supplies in the past. And a lot of times when you use cheaper supplies, they don't always completely dissolve or even you know some of my pencils like my watercolor pencils sometimes I'll have issues with them completely dissolving but look at this oh they're beautiful y'all will have to tell me in the comments if you have these already or if they're on your wish list and you want to get them I zoomed you in a little bit more just to make sure that you can see exactly how well these work. And when I was laying them down, they were so nice. They're just so smooth and so creamy when they lay down onto the paper, even on this watercolor paper. They dissolve so nicely and they are just moving around just the way that I would have imagined that they would. Because see, I used these before, like I showed you early in the earlier in the video. Oh my gosh, look at this color. Beautiful. But I've used these before. Oh, that would be beautiful if you were creating a galaxy background. Oh gosh, gorgeous. But I have used these before, <laughs> back to what I was saying. I've used these before like I showed you earlier in the video on a background in the Hannah Carlson book. And that paper in that book, it did get very buckled when I used them in that book. So I wasn't, you know, it wasn't on watercolor paper, but on this paper, this is just so different. And I know when you're using these, if you're using these and you're trying to blend them together, you always want to start with the lighter color first because you don't want to, I talked about this when I did the background, but you don't want to, if you're laying the colors next to each other and you're trying to uh, blend them out, or kind of blend them together, but not necessarily so much together, you don't want to pull the darker color into the lighter color. You want to do it the opposite way, and you want to start with the lighter color. And that's just a really good way of playing it safe when you're using these, but I will have videos coming where I'm using these now that I have this whole beautiful set and I'm going to have them all swatched out. This is so exciting. Look at this color. I love this color. And there are so many different ways that you can use these. And I plan to do a video where I show you that because after I do all of this, I don't think that I am going to have much time in this video to show everything that they do or all the different ways that you can use them. But there are several different ways that you can use them. Like I said earlier, you can blend the colors together and you could do that on a tray. I want to get that, uh, the Caran d'Ache mixing tray. I really need that. I haven't even gone to look to see how much it is, but I never really wanted it until I got the full set of these just recently. And I've been meaning to go on the website and see how much it cost, but I've just not gotten around to it yet because I've been so busy. And you don't have to use this water brush on, on these. You can use, it. oh, I didn't get all of this one here. You can use a regular brush. I really like my water brush just because it's so much more convenient and it's much neater. And I don't have a cup over here off to the side 
that I need to just keep re-dipping and re-dipping to clean my brush off. And I don't know, I just kind of prefer it that way. I love how the pigment is just moving and it's completely dissolving. These colors are just gorgeous. This is Chinese green. Uh, I think I got another color in that one. Let me get add a little bit more water here to kind of clean my brush off. Yeah, it definitely needed more water. That pale yellow is so pretty. Canary yellow. Oh, I can't wait to use these in a coloring book. You know what? I have... I have a watercolor coloring book. I can't think of what the name of it is right now, but I have a watercolor coloring book that is a lot of portraits. And when I'm done filming this video, I think I'm gonna pull that out. Yeah, some of the darker colors, I have to be really careful to take the pigment off the brush. And after they dry, if you wanted to, you could always go back and add more pigment or another color. Look at these reds, they're so vibrant. They, these have so much pigment in them, but, oh, this one has a little speck of blue. You blow that out of the way. It looks like it's just in there. There we go. I just didn't touch it. <laughs> these colors are just gorgeous. But look at these reds. So bright and vibrant. Now we're getting into our browns. English red. our saffron and our russet our cinnamon I just can't get over how well these dissolve and how the color just moves around so easily Oh, look at that, you could even blend the color through. You could pick some of the color up, just as if it was a watercolor paint. These are so, so neat. Our olive. Now we're getting into our raw umber, so we're getting into our browns. Oh my goodness, when I'm done filming this video, I am going to be coloring with these. I would love to do a whole page with just these. Now we have our black. I have to make sure to really, really clean my brush off after that one. And then charcoal gray. 
and we are getting to the end what was that grayish black dark gray oh my gosh on this watercolor paper with more water they just move around like a dream and then we have light gray this is a gorgeous color this gray here Then we have silver gray, another beautiful color. And then here's our white. Let me make sure my brush is really clean for this white. And then here we have our metallic. So we've got our silver, our gold, and our bronze. And I've heard that these don't work as well when you activate them with water and I would just assume that's because they're metallic colors and I would assume that you need some kind of a different formula they seem to be moving around very nicely so I don't know I saw that in some reviews but I would assume that you need a different kind of formula to create a metallic than you would just to create a regular color and I would say what I heard is incorrect. Because <laughs> look how nicely these are moving around. They're beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that gold. Our swatch sheet is done. And we have all the colors laid out, all 84 of them. And then now we can see what the difference in the each one of the uh, wax pastels looks like when they're wet and when they're dry. But these are amazing and I'm probably, I would assume that I'm probably going to activate them with water all of the time when I use them because that's really what I bought them for. But I just wanted to be able to have my swatch sheet like this just so I knew what the color looked like. And they're not like, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the ink tents, but the ink tents, the Derwent ink tents, they are really, really amazing because when they're like a pencil that has ink in it and once you activate it with water it turns into what would be kind of like a watercolor but it's not actually a watercolor it's ink inside the pencil they're just they're very different they're one of a kind and i do have a video on those and i will link that in the upper right hand corner and i've got a tutorial i've got i think i have a whole playlist with the ink tents and they're fabulous but they are very different because you can lay them down and they look one way but once you activate those with water they just pop and become so vibrant so i didn't know if that would be the case with this with these and so that's why i did it this way but i think now we are going to go ahead and maybe get another sheet of watercolor paper and we are going to blend some of these colors together and see what we come up with Let's go ahead and take a look at all of the colors we just swatched out so we could choose a, I think we're going to do a three color combination. So we'll do a dark and a medium color and then a lighter color. And I'm really liking the greens because you guys all know how much I love coloring leaves. <laughs> and I really want to try out some of these greens because this one is just calling my name and so is this one here and I kind of want to show you how you need to start with the lighter color and work your way out to the darkest color so that you don't pull the darker color into the lighter color. So I think we're going to do the emerald green, the bright green, and the lime green and those are the three that I have here. So if we look at this we've got our emerald green, our bright green, and our lime green. And we're going to go ahead and lay those down and let's take a look at what they look like and we are going to see how these blend out after we lay them down. So I'm going to lay my darkest shade first and like I said earlier you need to lay enough pigment down on the paper so that they come together nicely or lift nicely and you've got enough pigment down there for them to dissolve and just all come together. So this is my next shade. That was the bright green. And now I am coming in with this gorgeous lime green. Look at that color. That is so pretty. Now with these, they're not like you're using a pencil and you kind of need to blend one color into the other because, 
or when you lay them down on the paper because you're going to come back with your water brush or your regular brush and you are going to do that with your brush. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. And like I said earlier, let me make sure my brush is nice and clean and I've got plenty of water so the pigment will move around. And I'm going to start on my lightest color and start moving this around. And then I am going to take my lightest color up into my darker color. Look how pretty. Wow. I'm going to brush it off just a little bit. And then I'm going to come into my darkest color. Oh my goodness, look how gorgeous. I'm trying to brush my brush off just a little bit. And now I'm going to just come in here at the transition lines. And I'm going to blend those together just a bit so you can't see that transition line but look how well they blend together is that not so beautiful wow so so pretty I love this color look at that oh they blend together so beautiful let's grab I want to see what the blues look like so let's go ahead and grab some blues and do this one more time so let me see what colors I have here. And I'm going to do the blues just because they're easiest for me to get a hold of because they're on my top tray and I've got so much laying all over my desk. I've got my royal blue and my blue and my light blue. And we're going to do the same thing right over here next to the green one. And again, I'm going to lay down enough pigment And I'm going to start right here where I left off with that one and lay this down. And then I'm going to add my light blue. Okay, so let me make sure my brush is nice and clean and I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of water. And like I showed you earlier, I'm going to start with the lightest color. And now I'm going to come into the darker, oh gosh, they're so pretty. And you could spread it around and pull it out even further. And it's going to work just like a watercolor. Like, look how pretty this is. Now let's come into the dark, oh my goodness, look at these colors. And look at all the pigment, but I mean, you can pull it out like this more and more if you wanted to and really work it like a watercolor, which is the purpose of these. And you would get a much lighter effect over here. So if I just continue to add water and just keep pulling this out, it's going to make it lighter and lighter and lighter. So you've got plenty of shades just in one color. And so with all of these 84 colors you have a good amount of shades here but look how these just work together so beautifully and they just kind of move around so so easily And look how they just, they just work right together. Look at that. And on this watercolor paper, they're working beautifully. I can just keep pulling them around. They're not drying too quickly, but look how gorgeous that is. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I had a watercolor coloring book, and so I wanted to pull it out because I know somebody's going to ask me or I'm going to get a comment, but this is the watercolor coloring book, and it's called Prima Princesses. You can see on it right here, it says watercolor coloring book. It's got eight by or 24 8 by 10 images inside of it, but these are some of the images. They are absolutely beautiful. Of course, it's on watercolor paper. And look at these, but the images are all gorgeous.
and they're just all girls with flowers so that's an option if you want to color and you want to try other mediums or you want to get the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s and do some coloring. Now this is the watercolor paper that I'm using. This is what I put my swatch sheet on. So this is the Canson watercolor paper and this is 9 by 12 so all I did was get my trimmer and I cut it down so that this swatch sheet when I was done would fit in my binder where I keep all of my swatches for all of my different mediums and my colored pencils and such. It is time for me to end this video. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. I enjoyed bringing this video to you, and I really enjoyed getting a little more familiar with these than I really already was. It just makes such a difference when you actually are able to have the biggest set and lay down all of the colors, and it's been so long since I used them that it just was like a whole new world opened up. I don't know. <laughs> because they just work so much better on the watercolor paper than they did in the coloring book the last time I used them. But I am going now to grab my watercolor coloring book and I am going to play with these for a little while. And if you would like to see another video where I show you all of the different techniques that you can do with these, please let me know in the comments below because there's so much that you could do with these. But if you would like to see that, do let me know. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Everything you've seen in this video will be linked in the description box below. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.